Hello, this is Dai Xinyi from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Today, I will show you with our new work, an adversarial imitation click model for information retrieval. This is a joint work with Huawei Noah's Egg Lab and the University College London. My presentation will include these parts. At first, we will talk about the background and motivation of our work. Click models characterize how users interact with a list of items given click logs, which often includes a set of queries, ranked list of items, and the click data for each query. Click models are trained to predict a sequence of user clicks and return a set of model parameters that reflect users' underlying behaviors. Click models provide us with useful guidance for ranking functions in both training and testing stage. In training, click models generate users' feedback on items with specific positions and contexts that have not been seen in the click logs, which helps alleviate the inherent biases in be user behaviors, such as position bias. In testing, click models can be applied to evaluating the performance of ranking functions in cases where real users are not available or negative impacts on user experience have, be, have to be avoided. Previous neural-based click models suffer from the so-called exposure bias which refers to the discrepancy between the training and the testing stage. During training, the click models are trained to predict next clicks based on the right clicks, while during testing, we have to predict next click based on previous predictions. This limitation actually points out the conflicts between the dynamic nature of user behavior and the static user modeling that we used. In this work, we try to fix such limitations and design a better click model. There are three motivations in our work. The first is dynamic modeling. In this work, we base users' current state on previous predictions and optimize a long-term objective instead of a short-sighted one-step loss, which helps alleviate the exposure bias. The second one is adversarial training. With adversarial training, we minimize JS divergence instead of KO divergence which helps the model generalize well on different rank list distributions. The third point is that we can model users' intrinsic utility explicitly. To be specific, we use a reward function to guide the learning of a click policy that reproduces users' behaviors. The reward function actually recovers users' intrinsic utility and thus can provide important insights and useful guidance for the learning of the ranking function. After background and motivations, we will introduce our method in details. At first, we will talk about the problem formulation. As we mentioned before, we use dynamic modeling in this work and formulate a click model as a sequential decision-making process. And here is three major components of the formulation. The state ST contains current document, previous document, and previous user interactions. The action AT is user's interaction with current document, also defined as ST, as CT. The state updates according to the user's interaction CT and next document DT. Our framework consists of three parts, the shield embedding layer, the generator, and the discriminator. The generator pi theta generates user feedback based on state ST. The state ST carries the information of user's historical interaction with document presented before. 
the discriminator distinguishes the state action pairs generated by the behavior policy from those from the ex expert policy. The generator learns from the reward provided by the discriminator. In the training stage, we will first sample trajectory from the behavior policy and expert demonstrations. Then the generator and the discriminator are updated according to the following procedure until convergence. The state action value function QSA is estimated based on the reward provided by the discriminator. It works from two aspects. On one hand, it gives a low reward when the next click of the generated click sequence different from training data, which is similar to most state-of-the-art click models. On the other hand, it also gives low reward to the generated sequence where the prefix or the previous generated clicks is significantly different from the training data, which explicitly constrains the propagation of error. During the training, as the discriminator better distinguishes the generated sequence and the ground truth sequence, which makes the generator produce more realistic prefix, the exposure bias can be sufficiently alleviated. Then we will analyze how the exposure bias is reduced theoretically. We define JPI as the expected KT step utility of user under current click policy. Then we analyze the utility gap of traditional supervised method and our method. We can see from theorem 1 and theorem 2 that the utility gap is significantly reduced from quadratic to linear in this size t. Then we will talk about the experimental results of our work. We use the Tiangong SD dataset, which is an open search log dataset released by Chinese commercial search engine. We adopt three evaluation metrics, log likelihood, perplexity, and NDCG to evaluate the click models from the perspective of click prediction and relevance estimation. All NN-based models significantly outperform PGM-based models in the click prediction and relevance estimation tasks. NN-based models learn the distributed representations of queries and documents, therefore they can better capture users' behavior patterns. Our method performs the best among all NN-based methods, validating the effectiveness of our proposed framework. However, we find that both LL and PPL check the click probability condition on true prefix step by step, which means they cannot measure exposure bias. So, how do we measure exposure bias? It is difficult, since we cannot directly compare two click probabilities with different prefix. The solutions we find here is to use a surrogate model. The idea is simple. Now we want to compare synthetic dataset and the ground truth sequence. We train a surrogate click model on one of the click dataset and test, uh, test on the other click dataset. Based on this idea, we derive two metrics, forward PPL and the reverse PPL. Forward PPL is the PPL of a surrogate model that is trained on held, held out real data and evaluated on generated samples, while the reverse PPL is the PPL of a surrogate model that is trained on generated samples and evaluated on held, real, held out real data. We can see the details of these two metrics from the flowchart. To compute reverse PPL, we train surrogate models on each of the synthetic dataset and compute PPL on the test set, while in forward PPL, we tra train only one surrogate model on the test set and compute PPL on each of the synthetic dataset. To 
conduct an adequate experiment, we use P UBM as a PGM-based surrogate model and NCM as an NM-based surrogate model. For field comparison, surrogate models are used in both reverse and forward PPL for different click models, are all the same model size and are trained with the same training epochs. From the experiment, we can see AICM achieves better reverse and forward PPL using both surrogate models. An interesting observation we find in Table 2 is that for forward PPL of AICM even outperforms that of the real data. On the one hand, this observation indicates that AICM learns relatively simpler data pattern compared to the real data pattern, which can be regarded as a denoising process. On the other hand, the proper performance of AICM for reverse PPL, which is better than all of the baselines and worse than the real data, shows that data pattern learned by AICM is not too simple to fall into model collapse. Furthermore, we visualize the TSNE projections of the document embeddings and the GRU hidden states learned by the surrogate NCM from synthetic datasets generated by different click models. We can observe that both projections in document embedding and GRU hidden states based on AICM synthetic dataset are closer to the real data compared to NCM and CSCM. Finally, we want to show the performance of our click model on bad cases. Click models are trained and tested on real-world click logs. The document list often comes from a well-trained ranking policy. However, when the click model is used as a simulation environment for a real-world ranking policy, we cannot make the assumption that the ranking policy is always well trained. Therefore, we consider whether the click model can provide stable performance in such bad cases when the document lists are not reasonably ranked. To be specific, we shuffle the original document list which are well ranked and generate clicks based on such new list to different permutation type, half permutation and full permutation are used. Compared to NCM and CSCM, AICM achieves the best and the most stable performance, no matter when the inputs are permutated, half permutated, and formulated permutated. This indicates that no matter whether the input lists are permutated, the data distribution of the synthetic dataset generated by AICM is consistently closest to the real-world data distribution. This demonstrates that AICM is able to capture the and simulate user behaviors, even when it is faced such bad cases where the input lists are not well ranked. Thanks for your listening. That's all for my talk. If there is any problem, please contact me.